Hey guys, welcome back to Pop Em Up Chem, and this video is going to be on concentration and titrations. We can kind of see this as a continuation, if you like, of reacting masses, but using in solution instead. So we're going to be looking at defining concentration and molarity, calculating it in simple terms, and then applying that understanding to solving titration problems. But first off, Here's a refresh question from our reacting masses. Give this one a try. Pause the video. Okay, let's go through that. So firstly, we've got to calculate the number of moles that 10 grams of iron oxide would be, which is 0.0677, and multiply it by the ratio. And that gives us 0.1354. Now, it asks us for a mass of iron, so we're going to do mass equals number of moles times the molecular mass of iron. And that's going to give us 7.56 grams. So that's the first part of the question done. But the second part talks about what would the percentage yield be. So we just need to do actual divided by theoretical multiplied by 100, which gives us 66.1%. So on to today's topic and what is a solution? Well, when we talk about a solution, we're usually talking about something dissolved in water. That may not always be the case, but let's take an example here of we have some water. We would call that our solvent. So this is the part that everything else is dissolved in. It's usually the larger amount or the bulk of the solution. So that by itself is not a solution, however, so we need to dissolve something in it. So let's say we put something like sugar into the solution and we stir it until it dissolves. That is what we call the solute. Now, this is the part that is being dissolved in the larger bulk and usually makes up the smaller proportion. A solute and a solvent together make a solution. So we have two types mainly. We have unsaturated and we have saturated solutions. So a saturated solution is one where the maximum dissolved solute is dissolved in the solvent. An unsaturated solution is a solution in which the amount of solute that is present in the solution is less than the maximum at a given temperature and pressure. There is another type of solution called a supersaturated solution which isn't that common, but we can make it in one of two ways. If we were to take our sugar solution and heat it and keep adding sugar at a higher temperature and then let that solution cool down, we end up with what's called a super saturated solution. That's a solution that contains more than should be able to dissolve at a given temperature. Now these do have a certain characteristics. They are temporary. They don't last very long and you can get them in one of two ways. You can heat or we can evaporate some of the water off as well. So these may be linked or done together, but these are the ways we can get a supersaturated solution. One place you might have used one of these is things like heat packs. If you've played sport and you've got an injury, you click it and it usually contains a solution of sodium acetate that is supersaturated and that then is and uh, has an exothermic reaction when the crystals are formed and it drops out of solution and then you can heat it back up and it will drop back into solution if it's a reusable one and we can think about solutions in context of our mole journey we've already looked at masses of substances and the number of particles and now we're going to look at volume and concentration and how they are linked to this intrinsic si unit Okay, so let's define these and talk about some of the subtleties because these two words, concentration and molarity, can often be used interchangeably and they're both speaking to the same thing of amount per unit volume, grams per decimeter or moles per decimeter. So we have mass per unit volume or moles per unit volume, concentration and molarity. So a technical definition is concentration in grams per decimeter is going to be the mass and that's the mass of the solute in grams divided by the volume of the solvent in decimeters cubed now decimeters cubed is basically a liter for those who haven't come across that term before 
and we can also have concentration as a molarity. So it's important when someone says concentration to make it clear which type of concentration you're looking at. But for molarity, which is moles per decimeter, you guessed it, we're going to have the number of moles of the solute, and that's in the unit of moles, divided by the volume of the solvent in decimeters. Now, you can see here that on the tops of these fractions, we have mass and we have moles. Now, we already know how to change between mass and moles, and you just have to think back to your equation for number of moles equals mass over MR to see how you're going to be able to change between concentration in grams per decimeter to concentration in moles per decimeter. Usually, we're focused on the one on the right. Now that may not always be true, but in general, moles per decimeter allows us to better compare two different solutions in their terms of their reactivity or what we would expect products to be formed from those solutions. But that's not necessarily always true. It's just that often when we say concentration, we're talking about molarity because molarity is a type of concentration. So here's an example. And in this example, we're looking at ethanol dissolved in 250 centimeters cubed of water. And we've got to find the concentration in both grams per decimeter and moles per decimeter. A looks to be relatively simple because in the question, they gave us the mass of ethanol that is going to be diluted, which was 75 grams. So we're gonna do 75 grams divided by 0.25. Now, the reason it's 0.25 is I've converted centimeters cubed which is basically a milliliter into decimeters cubed by dividing it by a thousand. You can also get to meters cubed, which we'll be using for ideal gas law by dividing by a thousand again. So this is because there are a thousand centimeters cubed in one decimeter cubed for those who didn't know. That gives us 300 grams per decimeter. Now there's kind of two ways we can go about finding the molarity, but we know we're going to need moles equals mass over MR. So I'm going to use the mass of 75 first just to illustrate it here. So that gives us a number of moles of 1.628 moles. And then I just plug that into my molarity calculation. So my molarity is going to be number of moles divided by the volume. And I'm just going to use 0.25 once again, which is going to give me an overall molarity of 6.51 moles per decimeter. I could have also used the fact that we've worked out the grams per decimeter already. So I could have just done 300 divided by 46.08, which gives me the same answer, which is obviously great because they are meant to be coherent with each other, which is fantastic. So either way, you can use either method, whatever works for you. Just bear in mind, you won't always have worked out the grams per decimeter previously, so it's probably good to be independently calculating the molarity just so you're used to it. Okay, let's try another one. Looking at a solution of NaCl. This time, finding again grams per decimeter and moles per decimeter. So first, finding the grams per decimeter, grams is given to us in the question, and so is centimeters cubed. Remember, I'm going to divide centimeters cubed by 1,000 because I always do my concentration calculations in decimeters cubed. Definitely going to want to be familiar with the conversion between centimeters, decimeters, and meters cubed. Remember to go from centimeters to decimeters to meters you times by 1000 and to go from meters to decimeters to centimeters cubed, you divide by 1000. That gives us a grams per decimeter concentration of 123.68 grams per decimeter. And so remember when we're calculating molarity, we can do it one of two ways. We can take the number of moles and divide it by the volume straight away. So that would be 41 divided by 58.44, which is going to give us 0.701 and then we divide that by the the volume used in the question which gives us 2.12 moles per decimeter we could also use the value we got from part a and quite simply just divide that value by the molecular mass of NaCl which is going to give us as always the same value
What's that? You'd like to do some questions? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I've got some for you. That's lucky. So, first question, finding the concentration in grams per decimeter. Pause the video and have a go. Pop them up. Okay, hopefully you noticed we've got 112 grams and we've got a volume of 450 centimeters cubed. Remember, converting that to decimeters is going to give us 248.9 grams per decimeter. So we're really making some headway in our journey around the mole and we've looked at concentration, volume, mass and number of particles. But before we move on, we're going to look at applying the calculations we're using with concentration to titrations. So what is a titration? Well, a titration is a quantitative technique in which we can use a known or standard solution to find the concentration of an unknown solution. So usually we have a burette that either has a known or unknown concentration of something inside it. And we have a conical flask with a known volume of solution and some indicator. And what we do is we slowly, as we call dropwise, add from the burette into the conical flask. For example, if we do not know the concentration in the burette, there will be a point at which these become equal. That will be our titer and that will be a volume. And what we can use is once we have that volume, we can calculate the concentration of, in this case, the solution in the burette. So if we take an example of acids and bases, let's say we have HCl in the burette and NaOH in the conical flask. We can see from the equation HCl plus NaOH goes to NaCl plus water. There is going to be a point at which the base or acid equals the other as we add it very slowly. And that point is our equivalence point, our end point. So this is a little bit like reacting masses with solutions. We're just going to use C equals N over V. For example, if we know the number of moles of the base, we also, just using our reacting masses, know the number of moles of our acid. So what does this look like when we apply it to an actual question? Well, there are two overall ways we can do this. Um, we'll go through the method that's most similar to reacting masses first. So let's say we have an overall equation and we have an unknown solution of HCl. We don't know the concentration of HCl and we titrate it with a known concentration of NaOH. And our final titration is 25 centimeters cubed and our unknown solution of HCl was 17.5. How do we work out the concentration? Well, we're going to work out our number of moles using C times V, and that's going to give us 0.025 moles. And now, just like we did with reacting masses, we can see the stoichiometric coefficients are 1 and 1. So effectively, we multiply that by that ratio, and so that gives us the number of moles of HCl. Now, we rearrange our equation to find concentration, and it's number of moles divided by volume. Remember, volume in decimeters here. So we're going to get 0.025 divided by 0.0175, which is going to be equals to 1.428 moles per decimeter. So that kind of holds true to always converting to moles and using the calculations we've used before. We can also use this relationship C1 V1 over N1 equals C2 V2 over N2, where N1 and N2 are the stoichiometric coefficients of each respectively. So let's just plug in the values and see what this calculation would look like then. If we call HCl C1, then we're going to get N as one underneath and the same on the NaOH. Now, when we rearrange this, lo and behold, what do we get? We get 1.428 moles per decimeter. So you can use either of these methods. You could argue that the second method is quicker, but the first method is going to give you more practice in converting things to moles and getting the relationships of the reactions 
it really is down to you on which you prefer. Let's just go through another example. So in this example, I'm going to highlight the key information. So I've got my volume of sulfuric acid in orange, which is going to be my unknown concentration. And I've got my volume and concentration of sodium hydroxide in green. So I'll work through this example in both ways using C1, V1, N1 and also using concentration, volume and number of moles. Unknown concentration of H2SO4, our volume is 0.025 decimeters cubed. Remember your conversion. Number of moles, we don't know yet. We've got a concentration of sodium hydroxide of one mole per decimeter. We've got a volume of 0.0113. And so to work out our number of moles, remember, number of moles equals concentration times volume. Nice and easy when we've got a concentration of one. And the equation is two to one. So remembering to multiply by our mole ratio, which gives us 0 0.00565 moles. Now, remember, number of moles divided by volume is going to give us our concentration so that's 0 0.00565 divided by 0 0.025, which gives us a concentration of 0 0.226 moles per decimeter. If you see me use this big M, where I don't have a lot of space, that big M is pretty universally accepted for the term molarity, and that big capital M stands for moles per decimeter. Now we can kind of check our answer using the C1V1 over N1 equation. If we sort it out for H2SO4 on the left and NaOH on the right. Then once we've got our equation set up, all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it through by one, which is nice and easy. And then I'm going to divide through by 0.025. That's going to give me a concentration of 0.226 moles per decimeter, which is the same as we got using the other technique. Again, that's a good thing. Okay, one more example before I get you to do a question. So again, we've got a titration and we're just gonna highlight in the important information in the question and set up our calculation. So we're looking for the concentration of HCl. So HCl is our unknown and we've got the concentration of NaOH and the volume of HCl and NaOH. So NaOH has a concentration of 0.5 it has a volume of 0.025 and so number of moles is concentration times volume so we get 0.0125 for our number of moles of NaOH. Multiply that by 1 over 1 because of the stoichiometric ratio and we have the same number of moles for HCl and we know concentration equals number of moles divided by volume which gives us a final concentration of our HCl of 0.25 moles per decimeter. Remember, we can double check or just use the other calculation to do this as well, which is our C1V1N1. Plugging in all the values, we're looking for C1 if we assume that's HCl and we get 0.05 over 1, 0.05 times 0.025 over 1. So all we're going to do is multiply through by 1 and divide through by 0.05 and lo and behold when we do that we get c1 is equal to 0.25 moles per decimeter once again the same okay enough examples it's time for a question here you go pause the video and have a go at this titration calculation then pop them up so I'm not going to go through both methodologies here, just going to show you how to break this question down, highlighting in what we've got for NaOH and for HCl. And then we want the concentration of HCl, which is unknown. We've got the volume of both and the concentration of NaOH is 0.5. That gives our number of moles 0.5 times 0.025 is 0.0125. Multiply that by one over one is of course the same. So our concentration is going to be 0.0125 divided by 0.035. 
which gives us a final concentration of HCl of 0.357 moles per decimeter. Okay, you're loving it. Have a go at this one here. Pause the video, give yourself some time. Pop them up! As usual, taking all the information from the question, so we're looking for the concentration of sulfuric acid here, which is unknown. We've got the volume of both, and we've got the concentration of NaOH. So we've got a volume of H2SO4 of 0.01 decimeters, a concentration of NaOH of 1, and a volume of 0.0087. And because the concentration is 1, we get overall number of moles of 0.0087. Make sure you take into account the stoichiometric ratio, which in this case is 1 over 2. So we're going to get half of 0 0.0087, which is 0 0.00435. Concentration equals number of moles divided by volume, which gives us 0 0.435 moles per decimeter. So there will be some videos coming on two practicals here. One, making a standard solution to use in titration and one, the titration in practice. They will go with the questions that are in your practical workbook when I release them. And until then, there is the questions in the worksheet workbook to be doing in the meantime. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share these videos with whoever you think would benefit from them. And as always, practice makes slightly better.